How are you today, Mayor? Doing fine, Joe. How are you? Doing well, thank you. Uh, didn't uh, get too snowed out, and now it looks like we're going to get washed out. <laughs> That's uh, okay with me. <laughs> both count. <laughs> Actually, this may be more impactful than the snowstorm uh, with the wind and the rain and maybe some coastal erosion on the way. Yeah, I'm sure we'll, DPW will be prepared. But uh, you better, better rain than snow. Either way, I don't care. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, yeah. How did the city fare from the uh, quote-unquote snowstorm? <laughs> that was fine. That yeah. was fine. The concern right along was the prediction of that flash freeze. That's why we did... Uh, an abundance of salting, so uh, I think it worked out fine. Yeah, I saw the the brining trucks out beforehand too for the first time. So that's a big help, absolutely, yeah, definitely. Uh, but of course, we need to talk a little bit, Mayor, about uh, your inaugural address uh, delivered yesterday. A very historic event at City Hall, as always. Yeah, it was a good day. We had a nice nice turnout. Certainly want to congratulate my colleagues, uh, City Council members this morning, particularly the three new ones. Uh, so, you know, Councillor Ash, Councillor Minton, and Councillor Campbell, and certainly congratulate Ian Kane on becoming the Council President. Yes. It was a nice day. Why uh, was uh, Judge Palmucci uh, uh, picked to swear you in? That was interesting. Well, I asked him. He, You know, we worked together in government for a long time, and we didn't agree on a lot of things, but <laughs> he's the first city council to become a, a justice since Warren Powers back in the, I think it was the 70s. Hmm. Uh, I just thought it was nice for his return to the council chamber in the robe after serving there for so many years. So, yeah, so that's the main reason. Twelve years, I think, uh, as a as a councillor, and uh, yep. never served as a president. He didn't didn't really want it. He liked, liked being out on the floor. <laughs> he did like being on the floor. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but I, ho- I was hoping we could uh, expand on a few uh, uh, items that you discussed yesterday. Uh, of course, it looks like the main theme of it was uh, preparing for for Quincy four hundred next year, right? Absolutely. Yeah. It's upon us. <laughs> Boy, it was so. It seemed like just yesterday we started talking about it, and here it is a year away. Absolutely. It's going to be fun. We have a lot of work to do. We get a lot of people engaged, a lot of folks involved, and, uh, you know, it's going to be a fun year. Yeah, what are kind of the uh, the next steps uh, involved in getting getting this prepared? Well, it's really working with the team on a number of areas. You know, some of the areas we described, three examples yesterday, there's a lot of work involved in each of those. Uh, and certainly a performing arts center is going to require a tremendous amount of attention. We've as a team, I haven't been on all the trips, but we've looked at a number of places, and I'm going up to Manchester in a couple of weeks to look at a facility up there mm. to really um, figure out exactly what makes the most sense for Quincy. So there's a lot of different examples out there. Uh, one of the advices we've gotten from uh, some folks that have been in the business a long time is do not build a static, planted, permanent seating facility that restricts your use. Mm. Make sure it's versatile. Make sure you can have high tops and standing. A lot of young people don't like the old uh, style. They, they like to go in and stand for an event uh, at a high top, and you know, particularly a comedy show, something like that. Uh, it's not just a, you know, we like to have film festival, but it's not a movie theater either. Mm-hmm. So it's, you know, accommodating accommodations of what could be events held there that serves our city. So mm-hmm. we don't want to get it right. You do these things once, and uh want to make sure we get it right so you know we're not we're not reinventing the wheel here it's been done in a lot of places and we thought we'd get as much information as you possibly can uh and that sweet spot of a thousand to twelve hundred people makes makes a lot of sense as well for a lot of reasons uh, so we don't want to overbuild it you don't want to underbuild it um so that work will continue uh the tree planting program we've identified a number of locations around the city so we're going to put a a bid together um, and, of course, with that, we'll go telling some of the stories of our city. And as you know, Joe, this is a lot of stories. It's, uh, we're talking about a long time period, uh, and the city has always been in the forefront, whether it's in business or industry or, or government or, uh, or the military. It's a lot of stories to tell. So folks working with us on that, uh, people like Ed Fitzgerald from the Historical Society, uh, Bob Damon and so many others will help us and guide us through that. Uh, it, it's going to be uh, it's going to be a lot of work, but there's a lot of excitement around it. Uh, the city of Quincy, the residents here are pretty excited about it, uh, and uh, they want to celebrate. I think we've you know we've lived in a in a number of years now, Joe, where it's it's you know not everything is positive, 
Uh, in fact, it's been far more negative than positive in general. And that, I'm speaking of world affairs, national affairs, and uh, so we should take a moment and uh, and have some fun. Really, uh, we have a lot to celebrate. With the uh, Performing Arts Center, are you envisioning a, a a new structure or an existing structure, given the time constraints that we that we have now? Uh, it would be a new structure, oh, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So it's something that uh, do you think can be done for the Quincy 400 celebration? Well, the goal is to be in the ground. It won't be open. Okay. It'll be in the ground, yep. So and I know you've talked about somewhere in the downtown area. Is that still the goal? It's still the goal. Yep. We've looked at uh, you know, three or four spots. Interesting. Okay. Uh, and also curious about the uh, the Massachusetts tribe of the Ponkapog. You mentioned providing a separate space for them out at Squaw Rock. Yes, we've got some buildings at Squaw Rock, and uh, you know, one of the uses of one of those buildings is going to be going to another location. So we're looking at accommodating this group. Uh, I mean, that as I mentioned yesterday, that site, uh, you know, it's really Broad Meadows, the Hummock, and Squaw Rock are the three most sacred lands to them for a lot of reasons. Uh, so we felt we really need to do something uh, to build that relationship and, and really cement their heritage. Hmm. Uh, in a land that uh, they were here long before the settlements arrived, or mm-hmm. well, the settlers arrived back in the 1600s. So the discussion is going very well. They're great people. Uh, there's a lot of connections between, we talk about the Ponkapog band, the Deposit band. Uh, you know, this, there's been little talked about with this group of indigenous folks. and They're working very hard to get the federal recognition. The stories and tradition are, uh, are pretty awesome. One of the goals uh, that I didn't mention yesterday, Joe, I don't know if you recall, but it was a great find at Caddy Park, uh, 3,000-year-old artifacts from the indigenous folks. And and they were shipped off out of state to some museum somewhere, I think in Colorado or somewhere, hmm. which makes no sense to me. So both the, the tribe representatives and the city would like to bring at least a portion of those artifacts back here mm-hmm. to be a museum. Uh, in City Hall, and uh, I mean, after all, it, it's connected to Quincy and connected to this group. There's nothing to do with Colorado. So, mm-hmm. uh, things like that, I think it will be exciting, fun, uh, and uh, and proper. So, we'll continue to work with them when they need the challenges, but, um, you know, I think we when we talk about the Quincy 400, it's, it's more than when the first settlers came to Mount Wallison. It's really about the history of folks that have lived here for well, in this case, thousands of years. Mm-hmm. So, I do you envision kind of like what what the Mashpee tribe has down the Cape, kind of a, a community center uh, type location. Well, that's what we're working on now with them. I, I see. Mean, they definitely need a place. They they meet on a regular basis. They have no permanent place. I see. They've used some city buildings for some of those meetings, but we want to give them a permanent place, a place they can tell their story, show their story, uh, and uh, Square Rock makes some sense. Mm-hmm. The question, of course, is where those Will those buildings be adequate? Right. Um, do they, you know, one of those buildings? Are they even there? The old Nike site buildings, the cement block with, with the uh, the shed roofs on them. Mm-hmm. So uh, you know, maybe there's some work done between the city and then the the tribe fundraising to make them maybe more period like or uh, something more natural looking than cement block. Mm-hmm. But you know, this, we're in the early stages, so let's get the uh, let's get the the site, first of all, squared away through mm-hmm. the legal process with the Park and Recreation Board, and then we can work on those other challenges of embellishing the, the facility for them, for their purposes. I see. So, and you also put out a call for uh, artists to build a monument for the tribe, yes? Yes, they have some specific ideas uh, that will be shared in that process, that, and it will tell their story, and uh, you know, so we look forward to that as well. Yeah. And if that weren't enough, Mayor, <laughs> you you also want the city to be part of the 250th anniversary of the country's independence. Indeed. We're looking at 2026, and, you know, Massachusetts played a crucial key role in all of it. When you go back, and, you know, I don't want to get into a history lesson yeah. this morning, Joe, yeah. but uh, you know very well it was really Massachusetts and Virginia were the two key spots. I mean, Philly played a role as well, of course, with the, the content of the Congress, but um, you know, I, I just think Massachusetts would be you know, would be lo- lo- uh, losing a great opportunity if we didn't do all we could to celebrate mm-hmm. and uh, you know put this state on the map nationally again for for the 
contributions it made to the creation of this republic. And, and Quincy, show me somewhere in Massachusetts more historic than Quincy. Uh, in doing that, you know, the stories of Adams and Hancock and Quincy Adams and, uh, you know, it goes on and on. So uh, we should celebrate these things. And it's a good opportunity, I think, to reestablish, uh, uh, you know, set a mark out, if you will, teaching American history. Mm-hmm. A lot of controversy in the last few years, what should be taught, what shouldn't be taught, what we should be emphasizing. And so I think it's a nice reminder, too, that, you know, our young people should learn the real history of, of this country. And uh, yeah, that's something that shouldn't be played around with. It sounds like you have a partner in that, in the uh, lieutenant governor. She expressed uh, some, some great interest in assisting with that. Indeed, and, and of course, she, she was mayor of the historic city of Salem yes. for many years, so I think she has a, a great appreciation as well. Sure. Uh, and tomorrow night, the reorganization of the school committee, is that right, Mayor? That's correct. Tomorrow night, the three members who run the ballot this year get sworn in. Of course, you know, that includes Kathy Hubley, Paul Brizzoli, and uh, the newcomer, Courtney Perdio. Yes. So that'll happen at the Coddington Building, and uh, we'll have a little collation afterwards for their families. Very nice. Well, good good to speak with you as always. Appreciate the update, and uh, I look forward to another uh, active year. Sounds good. Thanks, Joe. <laughs> Thanks, Mayor. Have a good day. Bye now. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.